reflection. I'm joined now by Leon Britton. He is a former British Home Secretary and European Commissioner and now Chairman of UBS Investment Bank. Lord Britton, thank you very much indeed for joining us. You thank you. entered Parliament in 1974, February of 1974, and uh, Ted Heath's famous refrain then was, who governs Britain? Who's going to govern Britain? Well, we'll see. I think the probability is that there will be an agreement between the Conservatives and the Liberal Democrats. It's not a certainty, but as we speak, that looks the most probable outcome. Well, what do they have in common here? I mean, in terms of some of the big issues, they're miles apart. Well, they've got to find enough in common to keep going, and the country power is in Power for power's sake, essentially. No, it's not power for power's sake. I think it is perfectly responsible. They have, the parties between them have a duty to ensure government continues. The only realistic way of doing that is to have an agreement between parties that don't agree on many things, but have to find enough to agree on. And that is what is happening. And each side has to make sacrifices and compromises, and they will do that. And if they didn't, both the country and the markets would would be pretty annoyed. It seems that central to any coalition being formed, Liberal Democrats want electoral reform. Can you see any agreement between the two parties on that? Well, uh, all I know is what is being floated. What is being floated is a suggestion that, that there should be an all-party committee which will make a recommendation. If it recommends that, there would then be a free vote in Parliament as to whether or not there should be a referendum. And, of course, the Conservatives, being opposed to a change, would be entitled to argue in a referendum against it. That's what seems to be the leading idea at the moment. And whether that is too much for the Conservatives or too little for the Liberal Democrats, or whether the reports of it are inaccurate, we will see during the course of today, probably. Uh, Nick Clegg worked for you at one point. What's his thinking going to be when he talks to David Cameron? <laughs> well, I think that he's uh, moved on a bit since working for me. Um, I think he, is, he will be uh, non-ideological, but political, by which I mean is that there won't be some overriding ideological block or barrier. <laughs> But on the other hand, he will recognize that he has to carry his own party with him. He will be practical and commonsensical in that way. The danger is a coalition government may shy away from making the drastic cuts that this country possibly needs looking ahead. Do you believe that? No, I don't. I think all parties realize that unless there is a credible, and I underline the word credible, agreement to make those cuts and that that is part of any agreement and that it's, people really think that's going to happen, the markets will react very adversely and very quickly. So that message has got across and the party political leaders uh, will operate on that basis. The parallels between 1974 and 2010, there are some, they're quite alarming, some of them. We had, of course, uh, house prices soaring, taps being turned off, well, they have to be turned off anyway. But two years after 1974, Britain went cap in hand, as they put it, to the IMF. Do you think we're in such a position now? No, I don't, because I think that uh, the parties uh, are aware of history and they're aware of the present circumstances and will... Uh, have as an absolute top priority an agreement to cut expenditure or increase taxes or some combination of the two <coughs> sufficiently to avoid that. And they will do that. And we can do that. And we must do that. And we will do that. Right. I want to turn now to Europe, of course, and put your European cap yes. on now, uh, Lord Britain. And uh, what do you make of the ECB and the Eurozone's attempts to stem the crisis and the contagion from Greece? Well, it's a sort of shock and awe tactic, isn't it, that uh, the initial package not having completely resolved things, partly because people are beginning to move on from Greece to Portugal and Spain, they want to throw sufficient money or the promise of money at uh, the problem for people to realize that it's not a one-way bet and therefore not to make the bet. And I think they stand a pretty fair chance of succeeding. Lord Britain 20 seconds, do you think that we need greater integration in Europe to overcome crises like this, particularly on the fiscal side? I think we need greater surveillance, supervision and uh, of, of action. Uh, if you call that integration or not, I don't know, but that's what you need. Lord Leon Britton, thank you very much indeed for joining us.